Hey guys, it's Mahal here and today I'm going to be talking to you about whether or not a business management degree is worth it, and especially in the UK. I'm Mahal Khan, I'm a BSc Honours Management graduate from the University of Nottingham after having achieved a 2-1 overall and I'm going to be studying a political science degree at the University of Manchester. Before we get into the video however, if you're new here or if you haven't already, then make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell to turn all post notifications on so that you don't miss out on a single video as soon as it goes live. Also, if you want access to exclusive perks such as being able to message me questions directly on Instagram DM or being able to play games with me on platforms such as PC, PS4 and PS5, then make sure you become a channel member today. You can do so by clicking the join button below this video and it only costs £5 a month. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, it's Mahel here. And today I'm going to be talking to you about if a business management degree is worth it or not. And I'm actually joined by Robert Simmons, who is a former University of Nottingham BSc management student, just like myself. So I graduated in 2021 of uh, June, actually. So only a couple of months ago, and he graduated in 2020. He does also have another business degree from the University of Groningen. But we're going to basically be covering, is a business degree worth it? Why you should study a business degree? And ultimately, what can you do with a business degree? And kind of just summing all of that up to give you an idea of whether it is actually worth it or not. So I'm going to start off by allowing Robbie uh, to actually introduce himself, uh, talk about what he does, uh, what he studied, where he studied and why he studied. And so the floor is yours to take. Hey, thanks, Mahal. Um, so, hi guys, how are you doing? Um, my name's Robbie. Um, I went to the University of Nottingham sort of from 2017 to 2020, did a management degree, so business and management. Um, decided to sort of do a year abroad with that as well. Uh, there were sort of lots of things that appealed to me about that. Obviously, wanted to study at a decent university, um, and sort of Nottingham sort of presented itself as a good choice. Uh, obviously, the nightlife out there is also pretty good. There's lots of social aspects going to the University of Nottingham. It's sort of a traditional wrestle group. So lots of positives there. Um, from there on, during you know during the pandemic, uh, luckily I was one of the ones that had already decided to do a master's degree. Uh, so I went and did that in the Netherlands, University of Groningen. Um, did it in something called organizational change management. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It's sort of like business psychology. Uh, you learn a lot about organizational cultures, how organizations function, sort of how different departments within those organizations you know should be innovative and you know grow through changes, uh, which is sort of very strategic sort of a high level topic, um, often it's only taught to executives. So that's really one of the reasons I went to the Netherlands. Um, and that's sort of a little bit about me, uh, sort of uh, after that, I sort of came back to the UK. Um, it was like, okay, I, I need to find a job here. I really wanted to work here, sort of it's, you know, German American, so it's sort of the middle ground between that, I think, which is very attractive sort of culturally. Um, and I decided to try and find a job here. Uh, got luckily found my, my CV was found by sort of a recruiter. Uh, she put me in front of a couple of firms to sort of do an executive search. Um, I secured one of those roles, um, did that for a little bit, really enjoyed the job. Didn't particularly enjoy sort of maybe some of the aspects of where I was doing it in that point in time. So went ahead and decided to make the quick change um, and find a sort of new place uh, to do the same job. But so I really liked the job. Um, uh, definitely one that a lot of people, I think, overlook. Uh, executive search is definitely an exciting career. And uh, yeah, Mahal, uh, back to you, I think, for now. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to give your overview. So I, myself, like I said previously, am a University of, 20, uh, University of Nottingham 2021 graduate in BSc Honours Management. I achieved a 2-1. And now I'm going on to the University of Manchester to study a political degree in uh, political uh, science governance and public policy so the reason i wanted to personally study a business degree at the time when i was 18 looking through uh, ucas to see what university I want to go to what uh, want to study is because my family uh, when i say my family i mean my brothers are actually from that kind of background both of them for their undergraduate uh, did economics at the university of essex later going on to both ucl and warwick respectively and i uh, when I was doing A-levels and also the IB for a short period of time, found out that I wasn't very good at economics, but I did like business a lot. And so I thought, you know what, it's similar. They can get you into very similar uh, career prospects and fields. 
And so I'm going to pursue a uh, business degree. In the end, I did actually get end up getting an A in a level business. So I knew that at the time the decision was right for me. And so studying on to uh, get a 2-1 at the University of Nottingham in BSc Management, it seemed like things did work out there. And in the future, there are so many options that I can uh, potentially have, such as going into uh, investment banking, consultants, consultancy, uh, even the public sector in, for example, government. And there's just so much you can do with a business degree because it is quite a transferable degree. And even if, for example, you didn't do something that was directly business related, at the end of the day, a lot of organizations, well, they are businesses. So a business degree can be quite handy. And that's basically my reason for why I want to study a business degree. What would be yours, uh, Robbie, and especially two degrees uh, in business? Yeah, no, I think mine would be actually pretty similar. Um, I mean, if you look at sort of the careers that are possible with a business degree, uh, it's really endless. I mean, it can go from finance to consulting to really, you know, IT. I mean, there's so many different various ways. And I think the reason for that is just simply because business management is really not the study of sort of business areas, but it's more or less a study of how people function organizations. And I think employers really value that. Um, they really value that you understand what a marketing department is, that you understand bits of accounting, that you understand bits of human resources, that you understand sort of the different silos within any sort of large organization and sort of that you're gonna have to be dealing with. Meaning that, you know, let's say hypothetically you become sort of a, you know, IT manager. There's gonna come a time where you're sort of at higher level meetings later in your career, where there's gonna be accountants in the room. So if you've never heard of terms like, you know, gap accounting or, you know, debt to EBITDA ratios and things like that, that you're exposed to sort of in, in a business degree, you're gonna probably ask silly questions. So that's an advantage right there. It sort of trains you to know a little bit about all sorts of organizations that you potentially work in. And then sort of from that grounding, often you know, when you have a grounding some sort of information to the reference point, it becomes easier to sort of research that and sort of you know, use that to sort of find your niche a little bit later on. Um, I think a business degree is really good if you don't know exactly what you wanna do yet, but you don't wanna close yourself off. So for example, if you go do, you know, ancient history or something uh, very specific, doesn't have to be ancient history, there's a risk um, that someone may say, well, why did you do that? Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you want to think about it, most people won't say that if you just did a business degree, generally just because of that simple fact that I sort of just explained, you know, it doesn't really close you off. And, you know, if you're going to be confused somewhere as a, as a young kid, which we often are, even as an older kid, I think, um, a business degree is a good place, good safe place to do that, to sort of find your wings. And you will learn about jobs just by being a business degree. I mean, I, I think we both remember going to Nottingham, you know, there was a heavy focus on, you know, consulting careers and PwC and, you know, big four and sort of learning of the different cultures and organizations and exit opportunities you have with that sort of degree. Whereas I think if you're sort of in a very specialized thing like creative writing or something like that, I think, I think you're a little bit more siloed. What do you think, Mahal? Absolutely. Um, I do agree with that. And especially your point about, oh, if you don't know what to do, then a business degree is a very safe bet. Because like I was saying before, let's say uh, you were 18 and you were thinking, I want to go into investment banking. And so you did a uh, business degree, but then halfway during your uni um, experience, you're like, actually, no, investment banking is not for me. Well, a business degree can get you, for example, into HR. It can get you into marketing, social media, even. Esports is an uh, up and coming, uh, up and coming uh, industry as well. There are so many possibilities. So you're not just uh, limiting yourself to one career uh, path with a business degree. There are so many uh, options for that you can uh, take advantage of. And especially uh, with us being both uh, University of Nottingham graduates, I do remember there were so many uh, focuses on massive uh, firms such as. Uh, Boston Consulting Group, PwC, and all them kinds. And within those kind of uh, firms as well, it's not simply about just consulting or just investment banking. There are so many uh, job types, for example, audit, you've got um, like risk planning and risk management, and just so many options. Um, even recruitment like you're doing now, like there are some of these firms that have in-house recruitment that uh, they would need to take care of. And so like I say, simply just think to yourself hmm i don't want to do, uh, i want to do investment banking let's do a business degree if you turn if it turns out you don't want to do investment banking later on well you're in good hands because with a business degree it is quite transferable yeah, and, and there are many options point, available you know if you think about it obviously traditionally to get 
sort of into investment banking, you wouldn't do a management degree, to be honest. Yeah. But what you can do is figure out that you want to be an investment banker and then go do you know, an MSc in finance somewhere. Or you can just get in even with a management degree. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's plenty of different ways that you can sort of go into careers like investment banking. But I mean, let's face it, the majority of us probably won't go into investment banking. Um, so, you know, if you're not exactly set on going to investment banking or, you know, something that requires a really numerate degree, then you don't have to go do that if you don't want to. I mean, if you, if you say, okay, I want to definitely work in finance, then, you know, you're probably better off doing a finance degree. But if you end up doing a business degree and then try to transition into finance, it's actually quite easy. You know, there, there was a colleague of mine or a classmate of mine, you know, she did some was just a business management degree and she ended up going and getting a, you know, a master in something related to like data science. So it, it doesn't close as many doors as it'll open. And I think that's a really safe thing about a business degree. And another aspect I would look at is it's just prestigious enough that no one will ask you any questions about why you did a business degree. But it's, it's not too siloed that, you know, if you've done law, actually, you'll often have to explain, well, why don't you want to be a lawyer? Whereas nobody will ever ask you the question, why, don't, why do you want to work in business? Because everything is a business. If that makes it's sense. funny because... Um, so I, think, I think that's something to, 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 to sort of remember and, and sort of keep in mind. I'm just going to say, say it right now. It's funny because uh, when I was at Dartford Grammar School for Boys and uh, my business teacher at a time he was actually a law graduate from the university of manchester so he often did get the question so uh why are you a teacher why are you uh not a lawyer and especially why are you a teacher in business and uh not law but then obviously you would that's with a specific field like that or even like medicine oh so um you're you're a consultant so you're a why are you, why are you not you studying medicine why are you not a doc- doctor there's so many questions that do uh, come up with that, whereas with business degree, uh, not so much. I guess um, my next question would be to discuss is, does it matter where you get your business degree from? And obviously, like, where you get the business degree from, can this also impact on whether or not it is worth it uh, to study one and obviously the prospects? Because obviously, traditionally, there is the uh, idea that you have to have at least gone to a Russell Group University to get anywhere decent. University is the way. But more recently, we've seen uh, degree apprenticeships and just apprenticeships in general on the rise. Uh, we've seen that sometimes all you need is a 2-1 because, for example, a 2-1 from, let's say, the University of Kent is better than a 2-2 from the University of uh, Sheffield, for example. And so how would you uh, take that on? Well, I would say, first off, disclaimer, because this video could age very badly if we think about it, just simply for the fact that we are really in the tides of change right now uh, with this goes on in society. And I think that's really important to acknowledge. I mean, there's so many factors, you know, it can get really convoluted, but I think the important thing to remember is what are your aspirations? So I would always say, especially for business, um, you know, if you have an offer to a really good university, uh, especially an undergraduate, then go there and do the business degree there. Um, If you feel like you're capable of it and you've received the offer, I would always just take the best, the best ranked university on the table in business, simply for the fact that name a university that does not offer a business degree. I think that's something to keep in mind. So, you know, what then begins to differentiate those business degrees within the labor market? And we can have a discussion about whether that's fair, whether it's unfair. But if you're going to do a business degree, in my opinion, you know, just you may as well just do it at the best place you can. Whereas, like, for example, I'll give you a good example of this. Um, medicine, it, if you like the nightlife better in Liverpool than you do University of Nottingham, it's not going to affect your, it's not going to affect your earnings in the end because you're still going to be a doctor and you're going to still going to end up in the NHS in most cases. So unless, unless you're trying to go abroad, then you may want to go to Oxford. Um, but, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's really not going to matter, but for certain degrees, and I think business is one of the prime targets here law as well. Um, just, just go to the best place you have an offer for. You know, because universities, those courses like business and law, they're not hard to get into, but the higher you go up sort of in the hierarchy, let's, let's face it, it gets more and more complicated to get an offer. And, you know, an admissions tutor thought you were capable of it. So don't doubt yourself and just go for the highest offer you have, especially for undergraduate. I think, you know, at master's level, take more things into consideration. And, and me and you probably discussed this. Price, for example. For example, I had an Absolutely. offer to go to University of Manchester and, and do my master in business there for 25K, um, 
but I, I went to the Netherlands and did it. And I don't think it's actually, I think it actually helped me because I got teaching experience there and was able to do other things. So I think once you're at master's level, you can sort of be more outgoing with your choice of where you do your master for a business degree. That makes sense. But I think yeah, because um, a, a master's degree is more like supplementary, whereas obviously the undergraduate is like the essential. If you don't have any other experience at that level, for example, an apprenticeship or uh, whatnot. So obviously when it comes to your undergraduate, those kind of decisions matter more than when it comes to your postgraduate. Um, but you do make a fair point, actually. There are so many universities out there that offer a business degree. Even colleges offer like a, uh, a level three, I believe it's level three qualification uh, in business. And so when there are so many business graduates out there and some of them, are like, yeah, I'm just going to go to uni for the sake of it. You do have to do something to stand out. And so I guess that does start with going to a reputable uh, institution and not just getting it from... We definitely need to add the, the second part to that answer, though, which is, let's say your best offer is the University of Essex. Well, that's fine. Then go to the University of Essex. Make sure you intern somewhere. Make it a sandwich course. Make sure you do a placement somewhere. And all of a sudden, you can end up better somebody who went to, you know, at any prestigious university you want to put into, not going to throw any names out there. That's what we that were out. actually uh, going to get into next. Uh, you actually yeah, have gone yeah. to next point <laughs> too oh, early. But uh, me. never mind, oh, um, yeah. because Sorry. we're going to go on to that. So I was actually going to ask next. So like I say, because a business degree, like so many people study it in the UK alone, let alone across the world, whether that be in America, Canada, Australia, India, even or wherever else. What can you do to make yourself stand out and truly make that uh, business degree worth it? Because, for example, let's take myself. I have a pretty decent CV in terms of uh, extracurricular activities or whatnot. I mean, I'm a YouTuber with over 25K, but that's not actually on my CV. But when you actually look at my CV, I've got wow. different ambassadorial, and wow. ambassadorial roles for the university. I've got two awards to my name. But the one thing I'm missing myself is an internship which I feel is a massive problem for myself. Uh, whereas there are other people who are so focused on getting internship after internship after internship, but outside of that, they have, it's, they, they get, come across as quite robotic. They don't have anything that show, sells them like as a person, if you get what I mean. They don't, for example, I don't know, play rugby or do like, I don't know, water polo or even have like an Instagram business or something. They don't have something that, makes them stand up for themselves they seem very just career driven and robotic in that sense so what would you say when let's say you have your two one in a business degree on your cv what else would you need to have on there to make yourself truly stand out and make it worth it well i mean i think you know obviously you know once you have the two one it's too late so one of my friends is actually realizing this himself once you have finished your degree and you have a two one it's, it's already too late what you need to do is basically from year one, you need to start getting involved at university if you want to get the most out of the business degree. And you don't have to do hard things, but, you know, go to that career fair that no one is going to yet because graduation is five years away in a three-year degree, because that's what it feels like when you're sitting there. <laughs> remember, remember when you were sitting there in first year doing, what was it, public development and, and leadership? And, you know, you, you just had a takeaway at five o'clock in the morning to make you get up for this three o'clock meeting and they're telling you about your professional career development. And you're like, huh? So. Yeah, I yeah. actually uh, caught to comment on that. There's at Nottingham, we had a module called uh, professional and academic development in first year. Yeah. And I was sitting there in those lectures thinking, I, why do I need this now? This is this is this stuff for ages away. And now and suddenly remember, I'm at the end of that degree, one, graduated. And I'm I thinking. Kathy. I think her name's Kathy. You remember when she said three years goes quickly and everyone rolled their eyes? <laughs> and here we are four years later talking about this um so yeah it's, it's gonna sound cliche but definitely take every single year to get any sort of experience as you can um because at university even though you have work to do uh you still have lots of time to actually do a lot of other things that you won't have the time to do when you're sitting in your room after you've graduated with nothing on your cv trying to find a job then the pressure will be immense every single rejection will hurt a lot more so, you know, getting rejected, I even got rejected for an internship, you know, that I thought was career ending basically during university, but really all it did was teach me, A, how to be a little bit more resilient, 
Um, it taught me that maybe I'm not quite as good at interviews as I envisioned that I thought that I would be. I think that's also a thing is you know, people think, well, if I just get a job interview, you know, they're going to love me. It's going to be great. You know, it, the worst thing about that sort of is like you fall into sort of false fallacy of just being a little bit naive about everything because you've not experienced it. So the best thing you can do is build your CV, build anything you can. That means do an do Enactus. Enactus would be a great thing if you can do that. That's at a lot of universities. Do all the clubs and societies that make sense to what you want to do. You know, even if you don't know exactly what it is, don't be scared. Anything. And another thing is a lot of people end up doing things at university and they don't remember it because it's just part of the year. But you need to start documenting all the things that you do. So if you, you know, you go do the Nottingham Advantage Award, remember what that module was called that you took. Remember everything that you were involved with in, you know, make sure that you're sort of keeping track of all the experiences that you have so that later when you write your CV, it, it's easy. So just sort of build like a, a Word document called Building My CV, totally unstructured. But then when you actually need to write a CV, you'll have all that stuff you've done. You'll feel better about it. Um, you know, because human beings, we forget things, right? So, you know, sometimes you, you, I mean, you'll think about this, you'd be like, well, what did I even do in my degree? Like, what did I even learn? You know, I know it's only been a couple <laughs> months, but right. So, you know, just start writing stuff down that you've done. Um, you'll feel better about it when you write your CV. You can worry about the formatting and all that baloney later, but just sort of that you have an idea of what you've done. And I mean, if you, if you want to boost your CV, just try to do it the entire time through if possible. The earlier you start, it's cliche to say, but the better it's going to be. And it, it doesn't need to be like I'm waking up just to do activities to build my CV. It, it doesn't have to be like that. A lot of the stuff will just happen naturally from sort of, you know, because the universities do do a good job of sort of bringing companies, especially to campus um, and, and letting you sort of get first ideas of what you potentially could do. A lot of that is really slick and glossy sort of, oh my goodness, I'm going to work at X company. They're always going to show you the best, which most likely won't end up there. But still, just keep taking those experiences with you and just sort of, you know, find your niches, sort of go from there, I think. Absolutely. You should always take, um, it does sound very cliche, but every opportunity that comes at you, you should really go ahead and take it because it could be a small thing like, for example, Deloitte coming to campus lot, and setting up a stool or... Uh, for example, becoming a treasurer at your society, even if you don't really do much in that role, as long as you have it on your CV and you are able to sell that role to uh, your prospective uh, employer, that's what matters. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to uh, job interviews and whatnot, it literally is a sales pitch. You're telling the uh, interviewer all about yourself and why they should pick you above the hundreds of other candidates who would have applied. I have thought of something that's actually quite relevant to boosting any degree you do. And I think especially aligned to business. Make a LinkedIn. Like start getting used to having LinkedIn, using LinkedIn, connecting with people on it. Like LinkedIn is a social media tool, but LinkedIn is basically, it, it becomes a job interview. Because everything you put on LinkedIn, whenever you do end up getting a job, the first place, any place you put an application, and I don't care what industry, you're going to have some sort of recruiter, whether that be an internal recruiter, whether that be, you know, a headhunter, whether that be, you know, just really even the smallest business owner. The first thing they're going to look at nowadays is your CV for 32 seconds. If they find something that might sort of entice them, the next place they're going and a lot of graduates actually probably might not know there's some people in universities, they're going to your LinkedIn. Um, and if you don't have a LinkedIn, you don't have like at least maybe, oh, I don't know, 150 connections is a good bet. Really, it, it sounds naive, but shoot for that. To make you seem like you exist, they're gonna be suspicious and they won't invite you to an interview. So the best thing to do, the best heads up I can give anyone is get on LinkedIn early as well, because that will also, you know, there's sorts of like, tags and sort of badges and stuff where you can sort of add your Nottingham Advantage Award. Obviously, that's not applicable to every university, but every university has something whatever you can do extra courses, you know, any sort of certificates you do, sort of like social media training or, you know, hell, you've got lots of stuff that you've done on your sort of LinkedIn. Anything you can put on there, it, it'll, it'll, it'll help you out exponentially. Because even after your first job, the way headhunters do research, they primarily use LinkedIn to do that. So anytime you want to sort of move jobs even later, you know, the more built out your LinkedIn is, the more hiring people that do the hiring feel like they know you, advantageous, no doubt. 
Absolutely, LinkedIn is so important. Um, but I feel like we could do a whole separate other video just on LinkedIn alone. Absolutely, I'll um, think of the same thing. We need separate videos. <laughs> I guess to... moving moving back to the main uh, topic of this video, with the is a business degree worth it? Would you say that it has been worth it for you in the sense that, for example, you're obviously in executive search right now, which obviously is recruitment. Um, did you need a business degree specifically to go into that? And would you say that getting that from both Nottingham and Groningen uh, has helped you? Well, I definitely needed a LinkedIn. That's something I found out. <laughs> um, no, it's just from all seriousness. Yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't hurt. Look, going to a big brand name university is never going to hurt. I think a lot of people thought me going and doing, you know, a master in a different country was also edgy. Now, I mean, be careful with that. But, you know, I think in a place, especially like London, the more international you can seem, the, the better. Um, while, you know, speaking with accent-free English, which, uh, you know, we can discuss that how we want to, but, um, you know, those are really the important things, um, just being, you know, seeming international, uh, seeming interesting, I think. Um, but I mean, look, there's a lot of jobs in London, whether you're an international or not. And, you know, you know I, I sometimes wonder, had I went to Manchester, would I have had an easier time of finding a job? I can't say I would have, you know, but you can debate those things from, you know, here till there. I say, especially at master's level, just, just go do what you want to do at some point. Um, Absolutely. So would you, would you say, though, that doing business specifically has been worth it? Would you say that gave you an edge? And also, did you need a master's in business as well? Or would your, just your undergraduate degree have been like sufficient? Um. I mean, obviously, your, your undergraduate degree is actually kind of sufficient, especially in the UK. Um, you don't need to do a master's in business to go into the majority of roles. But I mean, nowadays, because a lot of people struggle finding a job, it's just going to become more and more common. And I think the good thing about doing a master is if you go do a master, then go do things like, for example, I taught at university. So I taught organizational behavior and international political economy. Um, you know, maybe you can't do something like that in the UK, but go do something in the UK where you do your master and then do research alongside of it. Um, that'll always help in good stead. So if you go do a master, they will allow you to do other things that get you more work experience during that master's year. If you engage with it, then you would just get an undergraduate degree. Because I think one of the things in the hell you're going to notice this when you go start a master's degree, professors will email you back in like two minutes and they'll like address you as a human being. Um, which, which for an undergraduate student sounds kind of foreign, even in third year. I mean, it's like they begin to give you a little bit more, you know, formality or respect, but especially the first year. I remember when I went to Nottingham, I sent this really nice email and it was like at 12 p.m. Like I wasn't hung over. Like I asked for help. And the funny thing is this ended up becoming my dissertation supervisor in third year. But I asked, you know, for some guidance on writing a piece of work. And he wrote me back something to the effect of, well, what do you think, Robert? I like, literally, that's what he wrote me back. <laughs> What, what would you do? So I'm thinking to myself, like, do you know how, do you know how, do you know how my first year self had to bring himself to write this email to <laughs> ask you for a little bit of guidance? And you literally just said, have a think about that. And I'm sitting there like, are you serious? Yeah. I think, I think uh, for me, it's too soon to say whether it's been worth it or not. I mean, it's been worth it in the sense that it helped me get into a politics degree at the University of Manchester, which is a higher ranking university than the University of Nottingham as well. Um, so all they literally needed was my two one in business. And because it is a social science going into another social science, that's also the great thing about business, by the way, the fact that it falls under the social sciences uh, category. So you can transfer from one social science to another. Um, whereas with some degrees, you need specific subjects. Uh, so I guess a business degree can give you a, uh, why broader horizons in terms of further study as well, uh, if that yeah, makes there's, sense. There's a lot of flexibility on that, especially in the UK. I know in education systems like the Netherlands, if you don't have a business undergraduate, you can't do like a business master's. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of Dutch students, they end up going to do their undergraduate, well, at least the ones that can afford it. They do their undergraduate in the Netherlands and they come, you know, do their, do their master in the UK just because there sort of is that freedom. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, we can discuss, you know, obviously Manchester. That's, 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 that's actually what I was uh, trying to say. Like uh, in the UK, a lot of times, for example, you can do, you have a business undergraduate degree and then go and study politics at master's and you can have a politics undergraduate degree and then go study uh, business at master's. 
And so that's, it's quite good there in terms of flex, flexibility. Uh, I say I can't determine whether it's been worth it yet for me, myself, uh, or not yet, because obviously I've not gone and got, I've got a graduate job just yet. Uh, however, let's take examples of what I want to go into. So let, the civil service uh, fast stream is one of those options. You don't actually need a business degree specifically uh, for that. And so I could have studied, I don't know, archaeology, let's say, for example, and still gotten into get into a civil service just as much as someone as a business degree with the exact, let's just assume, at face value, um, with the same uh, person with uh, a business degree could. So that being said, for that specifically, it's not worth it as such because someone else with whatever degree can also have the same chance of getting in. Uh, however, like I said before, I'm going to keep bringing up the investment bank sector. I mean, even though economics is preferred for that kind of uh, thing, a business degree can also work. But with, uh, let's be real, with investment banking, if you have a degree in, let's say, archaeology, again, chances are that you're not going to be eligible, no matter what they say about trying to in uh, increase uh, like inclusivity and whatnot. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, in their participation. Yeah, I know, I know, I know someone that has got a JP Morgan internship that had, you know, I actually actually accidentally told them that they would never get a JP Morgan internship. And it's to the degree that is it's like you know, I'm not gonna say which degree it is, but it's it's not, it's it let's just put it this way, it's a university park rather than Jubilee campus. So it's not a relevant degree per se. And I mean, I've seen crazier things. Banks are getting more flexible on that, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, if you, if you look at their CV, uh, they've done so many things related to finance. Um, you know, they've done more, more in, in, you know, to get a second year internship than I have to get, you know, a job with a master's degree, like in all seriousness. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you want to be an investment banker, just do finance and, you know, hope for the best, really. Um, you know, or do a management degree or something like that with some finance elements. Make sure you do some, some more maths than me and Mahal did. But Absolutely. for a lot of jobs, you can just do a business degree and you'll definitely have a good shot. I would say that one of the things that I enjoyed from doing uh, management at the University of Nottingham specifically uh, was that although it is uh, from the business school, so it is a business degree, there were elements of sociology, there was elements of economics, there was elements of law even, and it was quite oh, broad really in that sense. Like you got to <laughs> you got to exp explore quite a lot of um, different fields within one overarching business degree. So, in terms of whether I enjoyed it, I would say yes. So it was worth it on that end. But in terms of graduate prospects, for me at least, it's uh, too soon to say. However, the statistics do look good, as I believe that the average graduate earning from the University of Nottingham in BSc management is something like £27,000 a year, uh, which is higher than quite a few universities. And there are even a few people, uh, when I looked at statistics from memory, who even uh, got a graduate job with upwards of £40,000 a year from that degree. So in their cases, that definitely would have been worth it. Um, I guess I'm going to close off the video uh, here and we're going to provide an overview what would you say? Has it been worth it for, uh, for you or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, just briefly, I would, I would definitely say yes. Um, just simply for the fact that, you know, it taught me about organizations, right? So you learned about organizations that, you know, basically, if, if anything, it teaches you for three years to think about what kind of job you want to do in a subject that's relevant to getting a job, you know, so learning how to work in a business, learning to think about how businesses innovate, how they make money, profit and loss. It teaches you lots of tangible things to think about. You know, you combine that with watching, you know, some business news and, you know, you don't know anything, but you know enough to, to talk about in an interview to get just about any kind of job that you want to get. And, you know, ultimately, the important thing is when you get in front of somebody, can you convince them that, you know, you know, at least to a certain extent, what is going on in their business? And that's going to be pretty easy with a business degree, hopefully, if you paid attention. So I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I couldn't unrecommend it. But I mean, obviously, if you want to be something super specific, if you want to be a lawyer, might be better off doing a law degree. If you want to be a doctor, might be off better doing a doctor degree. 
if you really want to be an engineer, please don't go to a business management degree. I hope you don't take that away from this video. Yeah. But um, if you're maybe a little misguided, want something that's prestigious, but you know you can do well in and learn a lot in, definitely would suggest a business degree. Um, and a, sec a business master's won't hurt either. But you can also, like Mahal or some other friends I know, you know, switch to politics. You're not boxed in. I think that's the important thing. And there's flexibility there. And I mean, the economy needs lots of great people. So, you know, the degree is secondary. Really, it's what you do, how you present yourself. And yeah, I think that's what I would say. Especially with the uh, UK government actually focusing on uh, le leveling up SMEs as well. I think they've uh, recently invest uh, announced like an investment fund for SMEs specifically as well. So they are looking for uh, new business leaders to become both national and global leaders. So definitely, there is definitely potential. Like I said previously, I can't really say right now whether it's worth it for me. Uh, that's actually why, partially why I brought Robbie on because obviously Robbie's got more experience than me uh, in terms of his uh, uh, career path and where he is with that right now. And with us having both done the same degree at undergraduate level as well, I think it's uh, great that we've been able to share both of our experiences uh, briefly. I will be doing a full video actually on uh, BSc Management at the University of Nottingham as well as my review of the University of Nottingham. So do keep an eye out for that. Um, just before I close off this video as well, do you have any tips to uh, essentially make that business uh, degree worth it, considering, as we previously said, there are so many people that do uh, go in and do one and from multiple institutions as well? Um, I mean, just, you know, when, you, when you're doing that business degree, experience it as much as possible and get as many professional experiences or close professional experiences as you can while doing that degree that's really the most important thing I think that's that's the way to stand out is don't be afraid to you know get on LinkedIn and message people about doing internships in summers and you know even if you don't get one of the one of the big firms or big corporates like don't let it get you down just try to reach out to people because a lot of people that work in business are a lot more willing to help you than you think that you are and I think I've learned that sort of in, in in my sort of job you know you can message people on LinkedIn that you would have thought as an undergraduate would never would never reply but in fact they actually will and people will take the time to try and help you especially if you try to get sort of you know everybody wants new talent so if you're doing a business degree put yourself out there get in contact with people start networking it's also the best way to learn about jobs without having to do them so definitely that's definitely the, what a big tip i would give if you're going to do a business degree is just put yourself out there with that business degree and have fun you know i think that's actually a quite a great way and a positive note to uh close this video uh, thank you, for, uh, Robert, for coming on to uh, this channel and obviously talking about your experience studying a business degree, two degrees, in fact, in business. And like I said previously, I'm going to be uploading videos on BSc management as a whole at the University of Nottingham, as well as my review of the University of Nottingham. So if you do want to check that out and you haven't already, then make sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell to turn all post notifications on so that you don't miss out on a single video as soon as it goes live. Make sure to also become a channel member today by clicking the join button below this video. It's only five pounds a month and will grant you exclusive access to my Instagram DMs to ask me questions about UCAS, university, personal statements or anything else and the opportunity to play with me on platforms such as our Origin, PS4, PS5, and more. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like, comment below, and subscribe what you thought, what you'd like to see from me in the future as well. Make sure you follow my social media. That's at Mihal Khan on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, at Mihal X on Twitter, and official Mihal Khan on Facebook. Uh, Robbie, I will leave your links in the uh, description below if you do wish for that to be put in there. Uh, you can let me know fun. after. And, and thanks so much for having me on the, uh, having me on the channel uh you know thanks for thanks for letting me come on and talk and happy to do it anytime you, you want to chat about something happy to help you absolutely and i may, very may well have robbie on again in the future for another video uh, regarding the uh, recruitment consultancy industry because that is on the uh, rise at the moment I've been bombarded with messages about becoming a recruitment consultant and I know my friends have as well. So that's definitely something that I'm going to consider making a video about. So do, like I said previously, do keep an eye out for those kind of videos. I have been Mel here with Robbie talking to you about is a business management degree worth it and studying business management degree in the UK. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.